Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Woodworking Wisdom. So I was just having a, a slip of my tea there. <laughs> Steph caught me out, but welcome. Um, so today we are looking at um, uh, mini skateboards. Um, they're, they're really popular at the moment, and I come by this demonstration by my uh, my boy Jacob. Um, he he's brought one of these uh, plastic ones home for me, and said, "Could we make one of these but laminate it like a real skateboard?" Um, and that's what we did. So um, I'm going to go through the kind of stages that we went through um, and, and make one of these really nice little objects. They're cool little ornaments, but actually um, my boy Jacob, he's always playing with these things. You always hear him rattling around in his room, doing little jumps and tricks and things like that. Um, and they're really kind of sellable as well. He's asked me to make a few for his mates and things like that. They, you know, they really kind of cover these um, these little skateboards. Um, uh, like I say, these were these were quite popular when I was a kid, when I was at school, um, and they seem to be on a bit of a resurgence at the moment. So that's kind of why we're we're showing you these today. Um, I think we can just go down onto the bench here. We've got some veneers. We've got hardly any tools we're using today. Um, we've got some veneers. We've got some glue. And we've got a few clamps. We will be using a disc sander, but again, you can sand this in by hand. Um, so let's just kind of go through the process. Um, like always, we've got Steph on cameras um, and questions. So if you've got any questions about what we're doing, um, how we're doing it, um, please just pop it in the chat and um, we'll get to questions as we do. So I've got a couple of little styles here um, and I think We'll show you on the on the big camera in a minute or, or on a close up. Um, but just to get going, this is your kind of traditional little skateboard deck. Um, we've got the grip on top here. And then this is the kind of ones that I had when I was a kid with the flat back, a kind of almost like a cruiser shape um, with the patchy um, grip tape on it. Um, but you can make these any shape you want. Um, and the way that we, the way I've kind of got the former was just, I bought a little pack of skateboards online. So let me just grab my, the one that kind of you can buy in the shop. So this is the kind of template it's come from. Um, they've usually got quite cool graphics on them and stuff, but they're really shiny and plasticky. Um, and I think that we, you know, the, the laminated ones look really cool. Um, but that's what I'm using as a as a mold, okay, or a, um, a former. So you can get these in packs, um, really cheap online. Um, to get going in this, I spent about twenty pounds. So a tenner on these um, veneers, and then a ten pound on a four pack of the little skateboards. So it's given me two to use my formers and then it comes with all the little kneel, uh, wheels, I guess, and the trucks and the, the, um, the, all the nuts and bolts and stuff. So we've got all those. Um, so all the kind of hardware, the tech is really cheap and get it online and, um, and really easy and, and sourceable. They're, they're quite popular, these things. Um, you can see I've just Got one in the former there. Um, and all that is is a couple of these little spring clamps. We can take this off and that's our, our deck to be. Okay. Um, I've gone for five sheets of, um, of this veneer and that seems to give me a really good thickness on the, on the boards. So that's there for in a minute. We'll, 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 um, we'll use those. Um, I need to mark off where the holes are on these um, on this deck. Um, and I'll just do that with a braddle in a minute. Okay. So very kind of um, simple. Choose whichever colors you like. I've got some really nice ones in here. Um, and what I try to do is if I've got a, quite a dark color, is use that as the kind of center of the of the laminations and then when we put two kind of really light colors either side of that so sandwich that in between two light colors that's when you see the kind of lamination really jump out um when when it's all glued together 
Let me just show you one of the side ones. I'll give you a kind of a close up. Let me see which one's better. So that one's probably going to look better on screen. So if we can come to this overhead camera here, Steph, um, you can see the nice little lamin laminations um, on the deck there. Um, really nice timbers, these veneers. So they look really kind of really cool. The little trucks and stuff, again, um, they just come in the pack with the, with the skateboards. Okay. So before I take this out of its former and it kind of, let's come back onto um, camera two there, Steph, thank you. Um, before we take this out of the former, I'm just going to make some little marks with my braddle to make sure we've got these um, holes in the right place. So I'm just going to stick the braddle in there. It's got a nice tapered kind of spike to it. Um, and also these holes on the top are tapered as well. So it keeps everything nice and central. And we get those marks in there. We've got a few comments here, Ben, about um, Maria saying you could make the wheels from wood and perhaps you could as well um, scroll saw out the uh, trucks as well. So oh, yeah. it's all completely made out of wood. Them, it's completely wooden. Yeah, really cool for ornamental stuff. Um, but these, uh, you know, knowing how my boy plays with these, um, it would probably disintegrate <laughs> if, there with, um, if it was made of wood. Because um, they do take a bit of a battering, these things. Um, and you, if you heard Jacob clattering around in his bedroom with them, um, you know, that you, you definitely could if it was ornamental. Um, if you're doing one for like, um, you know, you see the surfboards on the, on the VW camper van dashes, um, stuff like that. Um, definitely it'd be really cool looking, you know, in, in all in wood. So it'd be really nice. Um, kind of ornamentally, um, but like I say, these really do take a bit of a battering. So I've marked off on here, you can't really see it on camera, but that is um, going to be useful in a second. I'm going to create a little stack of wood. So I need to just cut these out. And I'm again, I'm just using my little um, carving knife, really nice sharp knife to use. And I've put a board down on the um, on the table here. So just cutting these out. They will split along the grain, but I sometimes find this the grains off at an angle, um, it, it kind of tapers off. So I prefer to um, to cut these out. Let's just make sure we're we're wide enough for our board. That's about right. So we want two layers of this um, what is sycamore and um, we want that nice dark um, stained oak in the middle so we're going for two of these scoring the first time and then you kind of cut through on the second pass and that should just kind of come apart now without splitting along the grain so we've got one of those Actually, we need two of those, don't we, to um, to give us our kind of sandwich we were talking about. And this is a really nice one to do, you know, uh, with the kids. Because everything's, you know, apart from the knife here, we're pretty safe. We're pretty good. Let's cut that one a little bit short. Just check in on this one. So it's going to have to come from this other piece. And let's cut a couple at a time. So we can use this one as a kind of rough size guide. And you could cut this on the scroll saw. Um, just go a bit easy with it, really slow feed rate. Because um, sometimes the teeth will just um, pick up on this thinness of material and it kind of shatters it. So go nice and easy if you're cutting these on the, on the scroll saw. 
we've got some good uh, stories of people reminiscing about skateboards. Oh, yeah. And uh, Maria said that her and a friend, when she was a child, <laughs> found a bike and a two-wheel scooter on the beach, and they bungeed the scooter to the back of the bike. Uh, <laughs> sounds like they had a good time, but um, yeah. slight daredevil, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love it. So just scoring that and then kind of tearing that last little bit. Let's do another cut here. So we've got one, two, three layers. And that's going to form the little sandwich in the middle that kind of um, really shows off that lamination by putting those um, bright colors either side of the dark one um, is gonna you know look really nice and look like you can actually see the laminations because it's really thin this um these veneers um i'm gonna go for something quite decorative for the bottom of the board so remember we're going for five layers so let's again use something as a little size guide this is some kind of uh rosewood and these veneers are really nice to use, nice for inlays um, and, and really affordable. These were kind of like an off-cut pack and it was sold by weight. It was 100 grams and I think I got about seven or eight sheets. And um, most of them were very decorative. Um, we've got our rosewood here with that really nice um, strong grain pattern in it. Um, what else did we get? I've got a bit of um, Sapili, which again has that kind of reflective kind of look to it. Um, various types of oak, um, and some of them are stained and colored. Um, so you get some really nice, um, really nice timbers in there. Maria's just asked um, where, you, where you got the mixed pack of veneers from then. So this is just online on Amazon. Yeah. Um, same place with the um, with the skateboards, um, the little um, they're they're actually called tech decks, the the um, official ones. Um, but you can go really premium with these, or so my boy tells me. You can get really kind of um, upmarket trucks and stuff because people are really kind of serious about these. And if you've got a little stool or something that you um, you know that uh, if you if you're selling stuff. These are really cool, and they'll bring in, um, you know, a slightly different crowd to have a look at what you're um, at what you're selling. Um, this top layer can be quite plain because um, we're actually going to put a grip tape over that. So all I'm doing is just checking some of these veneers will already have splits in them, and that's probably why they're kind of seconds in that off-cut pack. Um, so just. When you're using these, just give them a little bend and a flex. Make sure you're taking it from decent material. So again, we want to come down here. Now, being pretty frugal with the sizing, you know, we want to get as many as we can out of here. You've just sort of started answering a question we've got from Frederick. Mm -hmm. He's asked, is there a preferred length for these so that they look in proportion with them being so small? Um, so I'm just really copying what's um, what's available because it needs to be in proportion with the trucks and the grip tape and stuff. So I'm kind of copying the shape that we've already got um, from the from the toy versions, from the, um, the plastic ones. Um, general length, they need to be a little bit longer than they look. Um, just so, because it's got a, a double curve, um, and quite often when things come around a curve, it's almost like they, they you shorten them. But as long as your skateboard or your kind of template um, fits nice and um, on top with a with a little bit of a border all the way around, um, you'll be in a good spot. Um, I could grab a rule.
they're about five inches long, about um, 125 mil. Okay, so we've got our kind of laminations, how we want them. I've got that dark one in the middle. I've got my really nice decorative um, rosewood on the bottom. So that's where I'm going to start on this face of the, um, the little rosewood. I've got my glue here and just a brush, one of these kind of artist type brushes. Um, I put a little bit of water. This is just the top of a, a can of Pringles. Um, and then I'm going to put some glue in here. And there is a little splodge of water because you'll notice these timbers, some of them will really kind of drink in the glue and it's almost like you're dry brushing it on. Um, but we want, you know, we want that to be slightly liquid because um, that's going to kind of soften the veneer as we, um, you know, when we, when we clamp it, we want it to kind of form around that. Um, little format. So just dipping in my water there just to kind of um, allow the glue, you know, thin it down a little bit. Um, and that's going to penetrate in a little bit better. And these PVA glues are, um, you know, uh, are water based. Um, always check, however, you kind of clean up, wherever the um, glue tells you to clean up. Um, if it's with water, then you're in a good spot. Okay, so next layer is going on. And what I try to do is keep them all um, kind of flush on one corner. So I'm going to use this top corner. Um, because if they are slightly misshaped, you can then align the um, template to that. So I've just stuck that other one on. And as you put this glue on, you can expect these um, to kind of curl up a little bit. As the wood kind of uh, rehydrates, it's expanding. And then you start to get a little curl across the veneer. So Frederick's asking here, uh, please excuse my ignorance, but what has trucks got to do with this? Oh, trucks. Sorry, I'm using the uh, lingo. So trucks are these parts here that the wheels um, attach to. Okay, so they're your um, skateboard trucks. And quite often, um, you know, these skaters, um, I know uh, Jacob's just brought a new deck. So we've got the deck, this bit on top. Um, these are your trucks and then the wheels on the side. Um, and it's a way of mounting the wheels to the to the deck. Um, quite often, um, you know, you get a really decent pair of trucks um, on your skateboard. And the actual skateboard itself, the deck, is uh, replaceable because they, you know, again, they take a bit of a bashing. So we're starting to create our layers. There are still lots of stories coming in about people's people's childhoods with skateboards and bikes and everything. And That's it's good. amazing that half of them are still here. <laughs> <laughs> They're much braver than I am. Yeah. Honestly, you know, with our adult minds, every you know, we kind of um we're so scared of hurting ourselves. Um, but you know, these skaters are fearless. That's the the um youth for you <laughs> yeah I think you, I think you build up fear don't you <laughs> yeah. as you get older yeah. fearless and daredevils as children <laughs> okay so we're not like swamping it with glue we're just making sure that there's enough on there to um kind of um soften the bit of timber the um the little veneer here and um, enough to kind of bond the two bits together we don't want loads on there we don't want to kind of like um, you know like do a squeeze out with it 
we just want enough on there to kind of bond it together and give it a good kind of set time um, so all these bits really stick uh, well it's a nice ripple in this um this sycamore but it's the lightest of the woods um, to give that contrast against the um that dark dyed oak and then last one let me just put a little bit extra on that layer and then just stick that on top again aligning it to that kind of top corner all right because some of the edges here are a little bit kind of frayed some are a little bit wider than the others that's good we've got our beginnings of our little deck um, sometimes I'll put a little bit extra down the side sometimes you'll kind of see it um, flaring out and you might want to just put a little bit extra down here um, and quite often when they're drying I'll um, if I see them opening up at all it's a good chance to um, to get it right so one deck's going underneath and this is really simple Again, we want to make sure we've got that all the way around. So we've got one deck there, another one on top. And I'm just going to give it a gentle kind of squeeze, allow it to kind of flex a little bit before we get those clamps on there. Get it kind of moving in those areas and where those the biggest stresses are going to be. So I've given it a little, little squidge. And then these... Um, these little spring clamps, really good. They've really got a good grip, actually. Quite surprising. So they're going over here. So we've got um, where the two bits kind of flare up. We're bringing them close to that to add pressure where we're kind of, that kink's going to be in the board. And then we're going to put two on either end as well. So we've got one here. And then one on there. Good. Um, just going to shift that over a little bit. And there, one of the bottom deck has kind of just scooched over, but that's fine. We still got an overhang. And again, let me just show you on that um, camera three. I'll give you a nice close up of kind of. Um, how the thing's working. Um, without these end clamps here, um, the, it kind of um, uh, splays open on the end. So, um, and even something like a little drawing, uh, sorry, a paper clip. Oh, sorry. Where are we here? Yeah. So sometimes a little paper clip like that can, um, you know, help hold things together. All right, so really minimal, minimal kit on this one. Good. So we've got our our deck from earlier, the one that we kind of taken out of the of the mold. Um, and again, you can see we've got plenty of overhang and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is get um, get my spare deck here, and I'd recommend getting a you know like a packet of four or something like that. Um, and then you've got plenty of little molds and stuff to play with. This should seat where, you know, we have those, um, we have the little um, kind of curves in the wood. It should sit in there quite nicely where it's kind of formed around it. And I'm just aligning where I've got those um, brattle marks from earlier. And again, just using a little clamp to hold it in place. And then we're gonna drill through. So, I've got my drill. I've got a tiny little drill bit in there, okay? Um, and we can just drill through this. In fact, I'm gonna put another one in underneath. Um, and these are gonna act like almost like a drill guide. Um, and that's going to help stop with the breakout as well. So we've got another little clamp here. 
another little spring clamp, slightly different style. Um, but like I say, we can use this now as a, um, oh, it's a drill guide. So goggles on, doing a bit of drilling. Let's get those goggles on. And we're just going to drill through our little hole. Doesn't take much. I'm not putting much pressure on, not much forwards pressure. Again, that will help with the breakout. Obviously, we want to be careful not to, um, you know, drill through our, our into our hand. Um, you can hold this in a vise. But real quick, easy job. Um, using those... Um, Using these decks as a little drill guide will really kind of speed things up. Quite often when you stop the drill with a drill bit this side, the chuck will keep spinning and it will kind of loosen the drill bit. Um, so just make sure that that's, um, you know, grips in the jaws properly. So drill to one side. And we've got a question. So Frederick's asked here, would it not be easier to mark the drill holes after the glue up has dried? Less chance of making a mistake. Oh, so yeah, this is dried. This is fully dry now. This is our one from earlier. So the one that we've just glued is, um, I put that to one side now. Um, that's going to take a few hours to dry. Okay. Um, it dries pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, you're right. I wouldn't work on that one just yet. Um, this is all dried and ready to go. This is the one that we started off with and we marked up earlier. So we've got a little bit of breakout on the back here, but a, a bit of abrasive over the top um, is, is going to sort that out really quickly. Okay, we've so we've got um, Donna here asking, she said, it looks like the veneer layering you're using would work for creating tatting shuttles. Do you think it's worth a try? Tatting shuttles? No, I'm not sure what a tatting no, shuttle is I'm not is sure either. what that is. That's a new one on me, Donna. Um, could you tell us what it is in the... In the um, comments and um we'll see if we can oh i think answer. it's for um well for in, i want to say lace and kind of embroidery oh, okay. like, almost like a lace bobbin or something i think so please Sorry, please correct me if i'm wrong pencil. there donna <laughs> sorry folks just grab my pencil i'm always doing this i pick things up and put them down in the wrong place Okay, back with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so again, using this as a template, we're just going to draw around and line those little holes where the, the bolts are going through and just draw around in a nice heavy pencil line around our um, deck. So we've got a nice strong line there. Quite difficult to see on this rosewood actually. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. Um, just make that pencil line a little bit heavier. I've got quite a few hobbies, but um, that one's never come up on my radar, that, that name. Um, okay, so we've got our, our kind of um, line of the, of the board, and that's really important that that stays um, you know, on top and, and um, is relevant to where our drill holes are. Okay, so on to our uh, little disc sander. Okay. Um, only going to use this side of the disc sander really important that um, it's not picking up and lifting over so we're going to be working in this area again you could trim this on a scroll saw you could um you know cut off the the worst of it and just use a bit of abrasive to to bring that in um but really nice and fast on the on the um disc sander here so donna's come back and um fuller as well they say it's for fine lace work okay um, and uh, donna uses it to make snowflakes using tatting um 
Oh, cool. Making knotted lace. It sounds really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I have to, have to research that a little bit. Um, my, uh, my work with hobbies is full now, I'm afraid. <laughs> so uh, we, won't, we won't be getting too far into it. But absolutely, if these um, laminations and things can be all the same. Um, you know, whether you're working on a full-size skateboard, whether you're um, making arches and curves, um, using vacuum, um, you know, the big vac bags and things like that, um, bigger formers, um, you know, this gluing of, of layers of timber can work for all sorts of different things. Um, we're doing it on a kind of miniature scale today. Um, but absolutely, you can, you can um, apply this to, to whatever. Um, and these veneers are really good. They're not uh, massively expensive um, and really nice and decorative. So, you know, you get some, uh, you know, I, I don't, <clears throat> it, it's such a, um, um, what's the word? It's such a, a good way of using all the wood because it's cut on the, um, on a spiral instead of um, planked. Um, so it's, it's um, really efficient way of, of using the wood and especially on these kind of exotics and stuff um you know it, it's a nice way of, of making something look really lovely without using um tons of timber or well, expensive timber as well okay let me see if i've got my extractor in now so a bit of noise with the extractor here let's pop the um belt and disc sander on now this belt and disc sander runs really fast so i put quite a fine grit on there I'm not offering this um, kind of hot lip. I'm going to pop that down so that the flat is on the table. My head in the way. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So Steph's just informing me my head is in the way there. I'm sorry about that. And I'm just using my finger as a pivot and um, coming around that curve. Quite a high pitch little um, noise there. My head. Okay. Thanks, Steph. So again, working from centre um, off to the right of this wheel. Again, keep that flat. So I'm leaving the line on there at the moment. We've got a little bit of um, kind of flare out or break out on the back there. So we'll come back and adjust that in a minute. Just be a little bit careful when using the belt and this sander. And there we go, we've got those lovely laminations um, on the side of the board there. And that's kind of what we want. And that's what sets these apart from the, um, you know, the, the shop bought one. That, that kind of realism of a real skateboard. Just smoothing anything in, leaving that pencil line visible. And we're good. I'm going to take this bit off rather than um, take it off on the sander, that's going to take too much away. So 
So I'll do that when I've got a bit more control with a bit of abrasive. And that shape's looking okay. There we go. So there's our little deck, all nicely rounded off. Um, again, we'll get rid of that breakout, so just want a bit of abrasive here. Um, that feels like about 150, something like that. And it's really just to knock off that kind of fluff. And I'm taking it with the direction of the grain. We don't want to kind of pull it back. And just a couple of swipes of that and all that fluff will just come off. Because it's only just hanging on by the little fibers on the back here. So it doesn't take much um, to remove it. Good. I'm not going to use that 150 on here where we had uh, where we've drilled through. Um, a little bit rough for this veneer. It will soon kind of wear through it. So I'm going to get something a little bit finer out my draw here. Once that, that feels about 400. So that'll do it. I'm just going to pull myself off a little bit of this 400 grit and just, just go around the whole board like this. It will kind of fill those little holes with um, with uh, wood dust, but that's fine. Again, I'm just going to go around the edge here and just knock off that hard edge, um, but with that finer abrasive, the 400 grit. Marie is planning on doing a uh, a penguin on a surfboard or a snowboard yeah, or cool. taking a bit of a laminated board going on. <laughs> did um, Maria see my penguin hook? I'm not sure, I Maria. Did you see the penguin hook from last <laughs> week's live? No, especially for you. <laughs> 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 and uh, Fuller's been admiring your um, your bowback chair, Windsor chair. Yeah. Saying that would make a good project. Yeah, for sure. So um, in a couple of weeks, uh, Fuller, we're going to do an Arbitech demo. And um, I hollowed the seat out on this one uh, with the with an Arbitech. So we're going to have a closer look at this chair in a couple of weeks, um, how we carved that hollow in the seat. Uh, but we used to run the chairs as a course. Um, we used to make loads of these things. There's, there's hundreds up and down the country, and some have gone abroad as well. Um, of these lovely Windsor chairs that we used to make, all steam bending. And I think we're going to do a session on steam bending. There's loads of really cool processes in the making of a Windsor chair and lots of hand tools and uh, machinery and stuff. So I think we've done it before. We've made a Windsor chair in a day, um, a bit hard to squeeze into an hour, um, but we're definitely going to go through um, some of the techniques um, involved in, in making these lovely stick back chairs because um, there's there's lots of different versions of as well and i just love this chair um all made by my own fair hands <laughs> and uh, um cohen and jason have got one too um all very slightly different there's comb back ones and stuff like that we do um so we're going to look at the makings of these and they're all very comfortable i will really add to that they're really yeah, comfy. surprisingly comfortable for a um you know for for a wooden chair it's just got the right incline Maria's um, been back on, sorry, just to quickly say, yeah. she did catch up with your live last week. She caught up with it in the evening. Okay. Uh, she did a great job. Penguins are just so versatile, and I would definitely agree with her on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like the penguins. I think Colwyn's got a penguin demo coming up as well. So um, any other suggestions you folks have got, um, you know, pop them in the comments, and we always do our best to um, to have a look at those. But they're cool creatures, aren't they? Or birds, I should say. So I'm just really opening up those holes a little bit. And what I've got here, because the um, the bolts that are going to go through this have a... Um, 
sorry, where are we looking here? Can I think there's my drill bit? Because the um the the screws that are going to go through there or the bolts that are going to go through there are countersunk. I'm just going to put a really slight um countersink on them. Little snail countersink, really nice little tool, this one. Um, it just has that little cutting edge nice and close down to the um thing there and it doesn't kind of fray it or anything goggles are going back on just in case um hold it down onto the um onto your board or whatever it is you're using and just a really gentle whiz on each of these holes and it should just give you a really nice um little countersink without being too aggressive. The kind of chatter ones, the ones with the teeth might be a bit too aggressive for this, um, but you can use a pin or something like that. The ones I did at home, where I didn't have all these um, lovely tools and stuff to use, I just used a pin. And I'll just show you how to do that. So don't go too far with that. Um, they're really small little um, bolts that are going to go in there. Okay. Um, so the way I did it at home was just to put a drawing pin through that hole and then just rattle that around side to side until we start to get that little kind of chamfer or um, countersink on there. Again, let me just show you up close. We're not getting quite close enough uh, with that camera. So little countersinks on top of the deck there and really nice bit of timber. Okay. So <clears throat> that's our, um, our deck. Just going to run that 400 over the surface here. Just get rid of any little burrs that might be sticking up, lay them back down or kind of push them back into that, um, that hole we've created. And important, if you're going to sand a little bit of it, sand it all over. Sometimes um, I've done these and the glue has kind of come up through this top layer. Um, and again, if you wanted to like oil this or, or, you know, anything like that, we need to make sure we've got all that glue off. But that looks fine. We've got just a tiny little touch in there. So just going to go over that. Um, so important we go over the whole thing so that the um, the oil or whatever we put on there, because um, you could spray these, you put your favorite kind of cool things on them. And then um, the trucks just come out of here. This is the little multi-pack that I got. Um, got all the bits and bobs in there. And like I say, there are kind of, I've done this on a bit of a budget on a shoestring. But you can get, you can really go to town on these things, and they are really collectible. Um, so we want eight bolts, four little nuts, and we got our four little wheels. So I'm just going to get it all out on the deck here. Could hardly even see it on camera; they're so small. Again, comes with a little, a little tool. It's got a screwdriver and like a little socket on it. Flipping the board over now. Um, we're going to just align our trucks on there. Just going to have a quick check. This, um, what they call the bushings, are um, facing in on both. So that one's going to go there, facing in, and that one's going to go there, facing in. So and get them kind of roughly lined up. And we get our little bolts. And these are really fiddly. What I tend to do is get them on the, the um, little screwdriver that comes with these packs and just bring them in. What I'll do is I'll get a couple going and I'll bring them into that close up cam so we can see what's going on. They really are tiny, though, aren't they? Yeah, a little bit fiddly. A little bit fiddly. 
might be worth having a magnet nearby. Um, definitely don't do this in a workshop full of shavings. Um, you know, you'll you'll uh, soon lose these little things. But I think that's part of the charm of them. They're you know they're miniature, they're all to scale. All the little nuts and bolts are kind of scaled down like you'd see on a on a full size skateboard. So I'm going to bring this um, to our little close up cam, so you can see what I've done. Okay, so I've just got them just going in and they've kind of bitten into the um into the wood they're not fully down yet they're just um, biting on there and what i do is then align the truck to the bottom side and then screw them right through I find it much easier than doing it one by one get them all there get them all kind of um gripping on and then um we can we can put them straight through steve mortimer saying um you need a skate park now Hi, Steve. Yeah, well, I've um, let's come back to a different camera here. Um, yeah, well, I've made a little grinding um, thing and a half pipe for, for Jacob. Um, he loves them. Um, so, yeah, you can make little, um, little uh, skate parks. If you can imagine the, um, you know, um, where they used to do it in the swimming pool, in the bowls. So I've got a wooden bowl um, that, that you can use as a, a kind of um, skate park uh, ramp, I guess. So these are just biting in, just getting them threaded on at the moment. They should all line up because we used our little drill guide. Uh, we just need to kick that over slightly. But yeah, can be a little bit fiddly. Sometimes you might have to back these off and back them in again. That's that one. And really just little fiddly components these. But once you've got them on, you don't have to take these off again. It's like, um, you know, you get the little set in the Christmas crackers, those little tiny um, screwdrivers. So what's happening is I've got a little burr in under there where we drilled through that breakout. I've just kind of sanded back into that hole. So I'm just going to try and get that out of the way and then align that so I can go straight in. Got a question here from Wayne. He's asking, do you finish the board first and then add the parts? Um, I don't. So it depends what you want to do with it. Because I want to put maybe put a grip tape on top here. Um, if I was to oil it, it, it the adhesive would um, be a bit of a pain. It might it might kind of um, interfere with the adhesive. Um, so I tend to leave them kind of naked until it gets to the point of, um, of finishing and then just use a little brush. Um, but you could use all sorts to finish these, make them really glossy with um, uh, things like uh, epoxy, epoxy glues. Um, you could, um, you know, do a little bit of airbrushing. Um, if I was to airbrush the bottom, I would probably um, do that first and then put your trucks on because otherwise it's going to get in the way of all your masking and, and stuff like that. Because you can, you know, you can design these. You could do a little bit of pyro on them if you want. Um, to to kind of personalize them for people. Um, they also work really well as like little keychains and things like that. So let's get our screws in here. Same same deal. Super fiddly again, but we will get there. That 
Let's go in there. And I give them a, you know, like a full turn that will bite into the, the timber of the deck. Let's see if we can move this a little bit quicker. You need one of those Lightcraft head magnifying That's glass right. glasses, glasses sets, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> a pair of scissors and a, a, sorry, a pair of tweezers and a, yeah. a magnifying glass or something. There we go. So we can get those trucks on nice and easily and they all line up with our um, our holes. So again, just getting that going, get it biting into the deck and then just advance those um, little um, bolts through that deck. And they've all aligned nicely through using that um, plastic deck as a as a drill guide and biting onto these trucks. There we go. So we've got our skateboard. It hasn't got any wheels on yet. There's a little bit to fiddle around with, um, getting these set nicely. Um, but we don't want to be watching that all day. That soon gets boring. Um, the... Um, Nut I'm just loading into our um, little tool here, and then the wheel goes on that, and then that goes straight onto that threaded bit on the on the truck. Another one, just get that loaded in there. Wheel on top. Like I say, this multi-pack comes with all the tools that you need. They generally come with a little um, tool like that um, when you get one of these, um, the kind of plastic skateboards. And, you know, the, the thing that sparked this really was um, Jacob was showing me these and he was showing me lots of people who sell them and they go for really good money actually. If you get an unusual shape, because all the ones from the shops are um, are kind of a general shape, um, but you can make these long boards, you can make them cruisers, all sorts of cool shapes. That one doesn't want to go on. I'll try the other one. Oops. That's going on there. Good, that's a bit on now. And then our last one. Let's go in there and onto our truck. So there we go, got a little skateboard. Um, and like I say, they come with um, the grip tape and stuff as well. You can get these grip tapes. Um, they That will go right on top, and you'll see it, it kind of aligns with all the, our little, um, our little uh, bolts that we've put in. Um, that's in case you wanted to undo them and stuff. Um, and you can cut them up as well. I kind of went for this kind of retro style one. Um, I, this is what I remember them being like when I was a kid, um, with this flat back. and um, I just cut this. Um, it, it is like an abrasive, um, so there is a grit in that. Um, so don't use your best scissors. Don't use your hairdressing scissors. Um, get an old pair and um, and you know cut them up as as you see fit, or just use it as is. Um, go straight on there. Um, you can decorate the bottom face. You can see I've put this one upside down in my former, so I've got my nice, pretty bit of wood on top. And quite a plain bit on top, but that was um, that was my bad. But, but that oak still looks really cool with the flex running through it. Um, so let's have a kind of closer look at this one that we've made. Um, so there's the top of the deck with that lovely kind of rosewood. Underneath here, we've got that nice kind of um, 
it's like a, a white oak, I guess, um, quite open grained. Um, but I would put a little bit of oil on there, um, especially on that bottom face. But I mean, you could decorate that. You could, um, you know, use your uh, pyro. You could um, airbrush that. Um, lots of cool stuff we can do. Let's grab my brush here. I've left my brush in a bag for, for oiling. And again, I've gone with one of these like artist brushes. Um, kept it sealed. And hopefully it hasn't gone, gone off. So I'm going straight in the tin with this one. Get some of this oil on here. And just bring it right up to where those trucks are. Usually I'd decant this, but um, just for time, we're going to um, just dip the brush straight in the pot, get in under all those little bits. And here. Okay. I would just leave that on. This this bit of oak is really dry. It's just soaking it in. You could come down the side here if you wanted. Um, that will really bring out those laminations, um, really darken down that um, that dark layer in the middle. But I'm not going all over the top of that deck just yet. I don't want to, um, you know, if I want to put a grip tape on there, we want to keep it um, a dry so the adhesive really works. And again, I just want to show you that lamentation because I just think it's really cool. It just looks nice. And that's what kind of sets these apart from the, from the shop bought ones. You see those little lamentations. Um, and that's what these um, these kids are looking for when they want to buy one of these, um, you know, homemade, nice timbers. Um, and yeah, really kind of, um, you know, desirable. I've got him, all his little mates now are, are asking for, for <laughs> these skateboards. So I know that they're going to be a hit. Um, that's about it for today. Um, any more questions, Steph? We, we're good for questions. Good for questions. Just a um, um, couple of people saying great session. Thanks, Ben. Um, and Maria said thanks, uh, Ben, Steph and Jacob. So that's oh, really Steph, nice. Yeah. And if anybody does take any inspiration from today, to send in any pictures. So Maria, if you, you do your penguin on a snowboard, yeah, it'd be great like to, to see. see that. It'd be really cool to see Donna's a bit of Donna's lace work. I, yeah, I sure. specifically would in, be interested in seeing <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> well, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I, I get it's not everyone's bag, but, um, you know, certainly if you're doing stalls, you're doing little projects, little wooden things, I know that these things will be a hit if you wanted to, um, you know, have a go at them. Um, really sellable, and they're going to bring in a slightly different crowd um, to your, your little kind of crafty tables. Um, if you've enjoyed the session, you know, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and, um, and, and subscribe um, and, and tune in for our, our next Woodworking Wisdom. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>